Hello again everyone and welcome back to Programming in Access 2013. My name is Steve Bishop and today we're going to be continuing the section on VBA or Visual Basic for Applications. And let's hop back into our database here and you'll see that I've created a new form here called FRM form and I've given it two different controls. I've given it a text box and I've get, given it a command button or sometimes just called a button. Now in the text box I went ahead and gave it a name and if you click on the other tab okay on the other tab of the properties of that um, of that text box you'll see I can change the name of it here so go ahead and change your name of your text box and on the button I went ahead and changed it to BTN go so this has a name of txt output and this has a name of BTN go now you'll notice that I prefixed the name with the with a three letter indication of what kind of control it is and this will become important when you're going through the code because you're going to be calling and assigning things to different objects on your form and it's helpful to have some sort of way of knowing what is the control I'm connecting to and what's the name of the control I'm connecting to so by naming it btn go that kinda helps me understand this is the button go and this is the text box txt standing for text box output alright so you can name it anything that you really want but it's important that you go ahead and name it if I drop a new text box in here you'll notice that the default is just to give it t text and then a numerical number of to give it some sort of new uh, unique value and that's not really helpful at all when we're going to go into code and we need to reference this object it's going to be hard to remember that text 5 is this particular text box so that's not what we want to do we want to make sure that we're naming our objects appropriately so that we can find them later alright so I'm going to click on the go button here in my design view and if I click on the event tab you'll notice that there's a series of different events that come up here now in this particular case I'm going to want to use the on click event and what these all are for are certain events are going to happen on this control in this particular case for a button I have the option to click on it so if I click on the button then what will happen is if I create some sort of code behind it in the on click event that code will happen when this button is clicked so that's how access handles uh, event you know handles events on the form so I've got on got focus on lost focus on double click mouse down mouse up mouse move and you'll see that if you don't know what all these are it, it's okay there's kind of actually down here at the bottom left here you'll notice macro or function that runs when the mouse moves alright so that's essentially going to give you a brief little description of what that particular event handler does and when it's being triggered okay so for this particular example, again, I've selected the Go button here, and I'm going to go to the On Click event here and select the ellipsis. I'm going to go to the Code Builder, and just so that you know what these are, Macro Builder is basically where you can build a macro, which is similar to code, but it's uh, it, it's definitely a whole different syntax and way of handling events and, and doing different things in Access, and we're not going to go into that. Then there's the expression builder, which you've already seen before. You can build expressions uh, in there. Or in this case, we want to go to the code builder. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And now we'll see that Access automatically creates some code for me. And one of the things that we want to notice is, remember how we were talking about the way that code is going to be grouped together and, and kind of organized in the background? Well, this is what we're starting to see form underscore frm form is the name of the module that is associated with our frm form form okay I hope that makes sense to you that's it's kind of important to understand that form underscore form is the module that is automatically created by access that is attached to the frm form and we can see the same thing is true for form frm customer addresses which is that form that we were working on before and we got the me dot query query okay Oops, so let's go back in here and here's where we can see a few keywords I'm not I'm gonna cover this a little bit later but for right now let's just talk about what we see here 
uh, the private is kind of a key phrase that helps indicate how much access other parts of the application have to it. And again, we'll go into that much later down in the in the series here. But what is important to understand is this sub stands for subroutine, okay? And the other option is what we call a function. But what automatically is created and generated by access is a subroutine for the BTN Go control on the click event. So this is very important. This is how access is automatically named this particular uh, this particular subroutine so that it knows that this is the event that should be fired when somebody clicks on a button, the button go button. All right. So what we need to do is let's take some of the things that we've already learned. Let's take a variable. So we're going to dim ourselves a good old variable. We're going to call it str text and we're going to give it a value type of a string. All right. So there we've got our syntax to dim and then there's this the variable name as a string. Now that we've got this variable created in memory, we need to assign it a value. We're going to assign it a value by using str text, oops, str text equals and then we're going to pass it a string. Hello world. All right. So what's happening here is we've created our variable in our memory and then we've assigned, okay, this equals sign here means we're assigning the hello world string, which is a string of characters surrounded by quotation marks, indicates that this is a string, and we're assigning it to the variable str text. So now hello world is going to be assigned to the str text variable in memory. Then what we need to do is we need to have some way of displaying this out to the to the user. Because if you think about it, all we've done here is we've just basically made hello world part of the computer's memory, but we're not showing it to the user in any way. And that's what the other text box is for. If you remember, I had a txt output is the name of the text box that I created back here. I'll just show you real quick. Remember this text box here? Notice that it is named txt output. All right. So back in our code behind, you'll notice that if I, you know, if I go back in here, there's going to be uh, different data here. We're going to have the format. We're going to have the data. We're going to have the other section here. And all of these are properties of that particular text box. So we have the name property. We have the vertical property. We have the tab stop property. All of these are properties of that particular uh, control, which kind of talks about, remember how we were talking about classes? Essentially, all that a control is is a class with properties. All right? So the one that we're really concerned about the most here is the one called value, okay? So the value property of the txt output control box here, the output control, I'm going to assign it, which requires the equal sign, the value that we stored in memory called str text. All right? So again, just to reiterate, we're creating a variable in memory, we're assigning that variable the text hello world, and then we are assigning to the value property of the txt output text box the value that we stored in the str string or str text variable. All right? So that's essentially going to hopefully put the hello world string in our txt output. So I save that here. Let's go ahead and go back to our form here. And under either the Design tab or the Home tab, you'll notice this button up here in the upper left-hand corner. And if you click on the drop-down arrow, you'll get the different views that we can go into. The one that we want is the Form view. You'll notice that we have the Form view here, and if I click on Go, there's our Hello World string that we stored in a memory, and then we assigned that value to our text box.
All right, so that's some of the neat stuff that you can do in VBA. We're obviously going to go through a lot more than that, uh, but just kind of give you guys a little taste of what it's like to create a variable, give it a value, and then assign that to some sort of control on your form and display it to the user. That's pretty cool stuff to know. All right, I hope you've learned something, and as always, go ahead and subscribe. Tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell your dog, whoever. Uh, let them know about this video series, and hopefully they can learn some stuff too.